In this lecture, we're going to look at some examples of solving a kind of mathematical equation called a radical equation. And these actually come in a, in a number of different forms. So we're going to look at what's really kind of the most, the most straightforward one here, and that's an equation that actually has a literal radical in it. For example, something like the square root of x plus 1 equals 3. Now, we're going to look at a couple of different forms of this, of this equation, but they're all going to boil down to using this same method of solving them. What we want to do is get the radical part, that, that's the part with the root, on one side by itself. Because once I've done this, I can get rid of it by simply squaring both sides. When I do that over here on the left-hand side, the square root and the square part, they kind of cancel each other out. And we're left with just x plus 1 equals 3 squared, which is 9. Now, I've taken that radical equation that I don't know, looked like, I don't know what, like it's something I didn't know what to do with. And I've transformed it into a very simple linear equation that I do have methods for solving. So now all I'm going to do is subtract 1 from both sides, and I'm going to end up with x equals 8. And there's my final answer. All right, so let's take a look at another example here that's a, a little more complicated. Now, in this case, you have to resist the urge to just jump in and start squaring things. All right, the radical part, the part with the square root, isn't by itself. Over there on the left-hand side, it's got this plus 2 that's over here with it. All right, so before I can start squaring things, I've got to get that square root by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to subtract... 2 from both sides, and that's going to make the equation the square root of 12 minus 2x equals x minus 2. So now I have the radical part by itself, which means now I can jump in here and square both sides. Right, so on the left-hand side, the square root and the square are going to cancel each other and leave me with 12 minus 2x equals... Now, on the right-hand side here, you have to be careful. I, I see students, a lot of times, they see this thing here, and they want to make this equal to x squared minus 2 squared. They want to take this 2 and just kind of distribute it into the parentheses, and you cannot do this. It doesn't work. Right? What you have to do is you have to think x minus 2 squared means x minus 2 times x minus 2. Now I can multiply this out. You can use the distributive property uh, or the FOIL method. And if you do that, this is going to turn into x squared minus 4x plus 4. And the left-hand side is still this 12 minus 2x. All right, so now look at what's happened here. We've, we've done something very similar to what I did in the previous example. I've taken that radical equation, and I've transformed it into a quadratic equation, and that's nice because we have methods for solving quadratic equations. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this equal to 0. I'm going to subtract 12 and add 2x. So the left-hand side becomes 0, and the right-hand side is x squared minus 2x minus 8. And we got a little lucky here. That right-hand side factors. This becomes x minus 4 times x plus 2. And now I can get the final answer by setting these two factors equal to 0. And this gives me x equals 4 and x equals minus 2. All right, now here, here's where we run into a little issue. With these radical equations, it is extremely important that when you're done, you go back and check your answers. Now, I know you're always told, anytime you solve an equation, go back and check your answer. And I know that, that a lot of you, probably probably just like I do, quite often you skip that step. All right? Not a good idea. You really should do it, but it, it's it's pretty common. We all, we all skip it from time to time here. With these problems, you can't. Now, and to, to see why, let's watch what happens here. I'm going to start by checking x equals 4. So I'm going to replace the 4 
in the equation, excuse me, the x in the equation with 4. And this becomes the square root of 12 minus 8 plus 2. Excuse me, I should have replaced that x with a 4 as well. So what happens here? 12 minus 8 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. And this works. 4 does equals 4 does equals 4. X equals 4 checks. That's a valid solution. All right, so let's look at what happens over here with negative 2. When I put negative 2 in here, this becomes 12 minus 2 times negative 2 the square root of that plus 2 equals negative 2. Uh, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, so this becomes the square root of 16 plus 2 equals minus 2. Square root of 16 is 4. 4 plus 2 is, uh-oh, 6. And that is not a true statement. 6 does not equal negative 2. So because we got a false statement here, we actually have to conclude that x equals negative 2 is not a solution and rule it out. Discard it. Now, the problem here isn't that there was a, was a flaw in our calculations. Everything went just fine. All right? Sometimes in these equations, you can get what's called an extraneous root. Right? That's what this x equals negative 2 is. That's a root that be, because of the method, the method introduced this solution that isn't actually valid. And it happened up here when we squared both sides. All right, when we square both sides, I mean, this is the right thing to do. This is the right method for this kind of problem. But when you do that, that's the step that introduces this extraneous root. If, if we had taken the, the negative square root down here and made this negative 4, then it would have been negative 4 plus 2, which is minus 2. But because we always have to take the principal square root, the positive square root, when we simplify something like the square root of 16, that's where we ran into trouble. That's what caused this x equals negative 2 to be something we have to discard. So the final answer here, to, to really cut to the chase, the final answer here is the solution to the original equation is just x equals 4. All right, so let's look at another example here. This one is... Uh, not so nice. This is actually kind of the worst case scenario for this kind of problem. And what's causing us trouble here is, is it, obviously you see that there are, are two radicals. And that's a problem because there's no way to get the radical on one side by itself. There's always going to be either two radicals on one side or one radical on each side. And that's not the model we're looking for, right? So... What we're going to do here is we're still going to be able to apply this method. All right? It's just going to be a little messy, so I'm just giving you a fair warning. This kind of problem gets kind of ugly before we get down to the final answer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to, going to just get this radical by itself. All right? So I'm going to add the square root of x plus 7 to both sides. And this that will make this the square root of 3x minus 5 equals the square root of x plus 7 plus 2. Alright, so now I can apply our method here. Now I'm going to square both sides. And on the right hand on the left hand side this becomes just 3x minus 5. And the right hand side, you remember how we multiply this out, right? You have to think of this as the square root of x plus 7 plus 2 times the square root of x plus 7 plus 2. Then we use our FOIL method. So I get the square root of x plus 7 times the square root of x plus 7 plus 2 times the square root of x plus 7 plus 2 times the square root of x plus 7 plus, now I'm finally at these last parts here, 2 times 2, which is 4. All right, so let's, let's see how we can simplify here. The square root of x plus 7 times the square root of x plus 7. This is just x plus 7. I can combine these two terms. That becomes plus 4 times the square root of x plus 7 plus 4. 
And I can simplify uh, just a little further. I can combine the 7 and the 4. So this becomes x plus 11 plus 4 times the square root of x plus 7. All right, so look at what's happened here. What I accomplished was eliminating one of the radicals from the equation. All right, so now I'm down to an equation that looks, that looks more similar to the previous ones. It has only one radical in it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to repeat the process a second time. I'm going to get that, the, the one radical that's left, by itself. So to do that, I'll start by subtracting x and subtracting 11. So this becomes 2x minus 16 equals 4 times the square root of x plus 7. All right, so now we're almost there. The, the radical is almost by itself. You, you see, we still have that 4 floating around in front. And that's actually OK. We could go ahead and, and just square both sides. And the right-hand side would become 16 times the quantity x plus 7. And we have to multiply out that left-hand side. Now, the reason I'm thinking about doing that, you could divide both sides by 4. Right? That would be absolutely okay. The reason I'm reluctant to do that is I see that if I do, I'm going to end up with x over 2 minus 4 on the left-hand side. And I'm really, really trying to avoid bringing that fraction into this because that's just going to make this thing even messier than it already is. So what I will do is I will do one little trick here. I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And watch what happens when I do that. The left-hand side becomes x minus 8, and the right-hand side becomes 2 times the square root of x plus 7. So that, that simplified the left-hand side a little bit and made the numbers a little smaller, which is always going to be a benefit without going so far as to add a fraction to the process. If you didn't see that, that's fine. Don't, don't worry about it. You could, you could just go ahead and square both sides of the, of the previous line without doing that little simplification. And you'd be just fine. You'd just be dealing with some slightly bigger numbers. All right, so now I'm going to use our, our technique here. I'm going to square both sides. And this becomes x minus 8 times x minus 8 equals 2 squared times the square root of x plus 7 squared. So if I multiply out the left-hand side, Using the FOIL method again, this becomes x squared minus 16x plus 64. And the right-hand side is 4 times x plus 7. All right, so now uh, I'm, going to do one, I'm going to go ahead and distribute that 4 here just to save some space. This becomes 4x plus 28. All right, so if you look at this, you see that the same thing that happened on the last slide, the last example, happened here. I've taken that radical equation and I've simplified it down to a quadratic equation. So I'm, I'm going to do what we do with quadratic equations. I'm going to set this equal to 0. I'm going to subtract 4x and 28. And I'm out of room, so I'm going to jump over here. This becomes x squared minus 20x, and what do I get here? This is plus 36, I believe, equals 0. All right, so now, now I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that thing, and I've got my fingers crossed, <laughs> right? Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that that factors. All right, if it does, that's, that's definitely going to make my life easier. Uh, if, it, if it doesn't, and I want you to be prepared for this because this is going to happen on some of these problems. If it doesn't, remember this is a quadratic equation, and you can always fall back on uh, the quadratic formula as a way to solve it. Now, in this case, I believe we did get lucky, and this is going to factor to x minus 18 times x minus 2. So that, And I'm going to do what we did before, right? what we do with quadratic equations. I'm going to set the factors equal to 0. 
and this gives me x equals 18 and x equals 2 as our two possible answers. Now remember, this is that same situation we saw before, right? We have to go back and check, right? And I'm getting really short on room here, so I'm going to try and squeeze this in. I like to put a line here. It just, just, this helps me to distinguish between my calculation part versus my checking part. So I'm going to put 18 in here, and this becomes 3 times 18 minus 5, the square root of that, minus the square root of 18 plus 7, and I'm hoping that equals 2. So what do I get over here? This, 3 times 18 is 54. 54 minus 5 is 49. So this is the square root of 49 minus the square root of 25. So this is 7 minus 5, and yeah, sure enough, that does equal 2. All right, so x equals 18 is OK. All right, now let's check the other one. Let's check 2. This becomes the square root of 3 times 2 minus 5 minus the square root of 2 plus 7. What do I get here? This is 6 uh, minus 5. That's the square root of 1 minus the square root of 9. And hopefully you see already we're about to run into trouble. This is 1 minus 3, which is negative 2, not positive 2. So x equals 2 does not check out, which means the sole answer to our equation is x equals 18. All right, so hopefully you've got an idea of how this method works now. The, the basic process is get the radical, the root part by itself, raise both sides to some power to get rid of the root. Do this multiple times if you have to. And ultimately, you, you know, you're looking for this to come down to you know, a linear equation or a quadratic equation or some other kind of equation that we already, we already have a method for solving. So there are some other kinds of these radical equations. This isn't the only way these can these can show up. So we're going to look at some of those other kinds uh, in the second part of this lecture.